Hello everyone, well here we go, this is it, this is going to be the final video that I'm able to do for a little while. I'm off in a hospital tomorrow to have a small uh, cancer removed from the side of my tongue and also have a neck dissection. So uh, pretty significant surgery coming up tomorrow. It means that there will be quite an extended recovery period, I think, certainly until... You know, I have enough speech to be able to to do videos again. So, um, so this is going to be it for a while. I wanted to do this last video, really, just to say thank you so much. You know, thank you so much to all of you for all of the support over all of the years. It's been an incredible journey that we've been on uh, together for for a decade. I have uh, been on this journey with you as as, uh, as I started on my original. YouTube uh, channel, and, and it's funny because I started like gasmovies.com, so look, I started in January 2012 on the original channel, but I was just sort of playing around with, with ideas then. It properly started, gasmovies properly started um, with the website, with gasmovies.com in March 2012, so it's funny that, that we're starting and ending for now um, in in March, so um, so yeah, you know, it's funny how that's worked out, you know, March uh, where we began, March where where we stop for the time being. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so it's been 10 years, you know, a decade uh, of weather videos. I hope you've enjoyed the videos and, and more latterly, the live streams as well. Started doing those from uh, 2019 and Gav got better. Gav got better. I wasn't very good at the live streams to begin with, but I got better as uh, we went along, at least I think I did. Anyway, I think I'm a pretty decent live streamer now. You know, I think I can hold my own. I'm not up there with the very best. I'm not up there with Sap, but I think I can hold my own, you know, uh, when, when I do my live streams now. So, um, but anyway, you know, it, it was quite a journey. It's been quite a ride. I've got to say thank you so much to all of you for... for you know, embracing uh, the videos and, and for the way that the community have developed, because that's what I'm most proud in, uh, or proud of, uh, really, is the way, <coughs> I'm so sorry, everybody, it's the way that the community uh, has developed, and particularly so from, like, the pandemic and from the live streams, I think that's what uh, really built up the community to the point where it is. I know that whatever's happening with me, even if I've got to go off for a while and, you know, I disappear, I know that the community... Uh, will will continue, and the community, uh, you know, uh, of Gazworth um will 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 persevere and and will continue whatever is going on with me. I'm not important in any way whatsoever. Uh, really, I can be here or I can be away and gone. You know, it doesn't matter what happens to me. But the community itself is uh, is going to go on, and uh, and so will the videos. All of the videos that we've done over the past ten years, over the past decade, you know. Um, They'll continue to be on the channel, so you can go back and watch any of the videos whenever you like. All of the long-range stuff, you know, the ideas that are within those videos, they'll, they'll be there for everybody forever, uh, almost like a time capsule, really. And, uh, and, and, and so with the historic videos, you know, so you can go back and watch those, entertain yourself, perhaps with those while on the way. And, and I think I did okay. Uh, I think Gab, I think Gab did okay, didn't he? Maybe did Gab, did that, did, did Gab do okay over the past ten years? Um, I hope I did. I think I did. I hope I did, but it's probably not for me to judge, because I suppose I'm biased. It's for you to judge. But I hope that I did all right at the end of the day. Whatever happens going forwards. Right, okay, so uh, let's crack on with this uh, last video then. Thank you so much, everybody, for the incredible support that you've given to me. So, sensory temperature is currently standing at 8.0, which is two and a half degrees above average. That's provisional to uh, yesterday, to the 26th of, uh, of the month, to the 26th of March. I think that's going to fall down under 8 degrees, though. Uh, by the time you're through the month, because I've got some colder weather coming up, more about that in a moment, so I'd imagine that's probably going to finish up low to mid sevens in the end, probably somewhere like 7.0 to maybe 7.5, something like that. These with GFS, upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles the next couple of weeks. We're at Northampton today, given that's where I'm going to be in hospital from tomorrow. So the red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Northampton. We're starting off uh, above average at the moment. We're going to go colder than average 
through the end, through the middle to end of the week. Quite a significant, you know, cold snap. The pink cold period uh, appearing appearing there uh, around the turn of the month, like very end of March to the opening days of April. And then further on through the first week into the second week of April, we will see those upper air temperatures starting to lift up. And it will be coming, it will be becoming uh, milder uh, by the look of it as we get into the second week of the month. Precipitation wise, there's going to be quite a bit of dry weather around over the next day or so, and then it will start to turn more unsettled, so not only becoming colder, but also, <coughs> excuse me once again, also getting more unsettled as we uh, go to month's end and on into the uh, opening week or so of April. Let's have a look at snow, row, see how that's looking. So there's going to be snow around. While I'm in hospital and unable to do snow watch, the weather gods have uh, decided, but after a snow this winter, they will deliver snow. You really couldn't make this up. I, I can't believe this, you know, <laughs> that they're, they're doing this to me. Who have I upset? You know, who have I, that's what I keep asking myself. Who have I upset? Um... I don't know, but there's definitely going to be snow, by the look of that anyway, definitely going to be snow, maybe even quite significant snow around uh, the final day of March and the opening day of April, and that, you know, pretty indicative of many places, actually. It won't last because of the strength of the sun at this time of year, so as soon as the sun comes out, snow will go, but, you know, that is significant, that is a significant amount of snow being forecast there, um... For, for the end of March and beginning of April. Temperature anomalies from the 27th of March to the 4th of April coming out colder than average, not just for the UK, but through most of Northern uh, Europe as well. So quite a cold week to come. And precipitation anomalies from the 27th of March to the 4th of April, largely drier than average, particularly for more Western areas. The latest wind flow map from EarthNollSchool.net shows high pressure sitting over the top of the country. And that will be bringing plenty of dry weather with it, of course. Right, so let's go through some chart data then. This is how the UK Met Euro run is looking for midnight on Wednesday. High pressure will be pushing up to Greenland and Iceland and will be starting to pull in cold easterly winds. They could bring snow showers into eastern areas with them. And as the isobars tighten, as the gradient tightens up, we will start to perhaps bring in more general outbreaks of rain and snow uh, on these east to north east winds. So becoming colder and potentially wintering as we get through to the second half of next week. End of next week, we'll see the high pressure slipping in from the north with low pressure over France. Again, we pull in these cold east to north east winds and they could bring snow showers into more eastern and southeastern areas. And then over the weekend, high pressure slips southwards. A milder air begins to infiltrate around the top from off the Atlantic. That brings cloudier, wetter weather, perhaps into northern and western areas and milder temperatures too. Icon, again, is looking blocked uh, around the second half next week with high pressure blocking around Greenland, Iceland. We're pulling in these cold east or northeast winds. They bring an increasing risk of wintry showers, snow showers with them, particularly to more eastern areas. And then as we go into the weekend, high pressure sits around the country, bringing a lot of dry, cold, frosty weather with it potentially. And that high pressure is still sitting there as we get through to midday on Sunday under the area of high pressure. There could be some overnight frost uh, with that, but the snow risk will ease down. GFS midnight to run, again with high pressure blocking around Greenland and Iceland and pulling in these cold east to north easterly winds. In the second half of next week, they bring the risk of snow showers with them to more southern and eastern areas. And then the high pressure sitting close to the country into uh, next weekend will deliver probably overnight frost. We'll lose the snow shower risk, but the overnight frost uh, will probably continue with that area of high pressure until we get towards day 10, and then the high pressure will slip southwards and we'll pull in these milder winds from off the Atlantic Ocean. Not for long, though. It goes colder and unsettled again as we go through the second week of, uh, of April with the uh, GFS midnight run. We finish up with low pressure to our south and pulling in these cold east or northeasterly winds. The GFS 6 set again has high pressure blocking around Greenland and Iceland, bringing in these cold winds from the east, they bring snow showers 
into eastern areas with them. And then into next weekend, we lose those cold wings and we set high pressure in over top of the country, bringing mostly dry, cold and frosty weather until we get towards day 10, when milder air beginning to come in around the top of the high, lifts the temperature up and we begin to go milder. But again, not for long, it gets back to cooler, colder weather once more beyond day 10 with this area of high pressure um, and then sort of go uh, unsettled, you know, go quite unsettled then with low pressure bringing plenty of, of wind and rain in off the Atlantic. Still, though, with blocking around Greenland and Iceland. This is how the precipitation type forecast is looking based on that uh, GFS midnight run. Plenty of showery outbreaks of rain over the next few days. And then wintry showers around midweek on was packing into the north. And those snow showers, but wintry wrist sort of moves southwards through the second half of next week. Um, you know, we could deliver snow even into more southern areas. It won't last, but it could well be notable that there's snow around the I think on Thursday, I think that's the peak of, of when we could see some snow last day of March. Uh, we finish up, though, going back towards rain as we head towards day 10, and we start bringing that moderate in around the top. Let's have a look at the 6 set. Shall we see how that one is looking? Uh, if you're enjoying this video, thank you so much, everybody, for, for tuning in. All of the support over all of the years that you've given to me, that you've shown to me. Uh, it's incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to all of you. I'm so sorry that I've got to disappear uh, for a while, but it's it's uh, just out of my hands, really. I've got to have the treatment, you know, um, but I do feel bad about it. Uh, right, okay, so middle of next week again, the snow showers are piling into northern uh, and northeastern areas, and then they're drifting southwards. This is Jeff S6 uh, bringing snow into towards more southern areas um, by Thursday. So even lowland southern England could get a little bit of snow through the uh, second half of next week. And then further, wintry showers, you know, will be piling in to eastern areas in particular. They start to ease off next weekend as that area of high pressure uh, takes over and we turn mainly dry uh, before we go back towards rain then as we get into, um, you know, into the following week. So this is Tuesday, the 5th of April, where milder air is coming in off the Atlantic and temperatures are starting to uh, lift up. I'm going to say thank you so much to Brian and to the weather out. That's where I started off. You know, uh, all of this, all of this began uh, at the Weather Outlook, really, on, on the forum there. So thank you so much to Brian, and thank you so much to the Weather Outlook, where I started, where I, you know, where I started all of those years ago. Uh, GM looking like this again. Winds are in from the north and the north east on Wednesday. They'll be bringing snow showers into eastern areas with them. And then the high pressure slips in over top of the country end of week into next weekend. Mainly dry, cold and frosty. And then beyond that, you know, we, we're uh, keeping the high pressure close to us. And we start to bring in milder air into high pressure from off the Atlantic. So temperatures begin to lift up and it starts to become less cold uh, by the time we get through to days 8, 9 and 10. And then the ECM looks like that again, blocking. It's all probably a result of the stratospheric warming, by the way, but we've been documenting in the videos over the past few weeks. So uh, blocking again is there over Greenland and Iceland. Pulling in those cold winds from an east or a northeast direction. The gradient tightens uh, around Thursday, and that could deliver, a, you know, peak winteriness on Thursday with uh, snow showers perhaps pushing quite quite well inland. That carries on into Friday as well, particularly more southern southeastern areas on those east or northeasterly winds. And then into next weekend, the high pressure sat out to our west, so it stays pretty cold. Probably the snow eases off, but it stays pretty cold, and there could be. A risk of overnight frost with that. And then we need something a little bit milder for a while before northerly winds return by day 10. So quite a cold and wintry ECM uh, run. This is the precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometcho.com. Showery bursts of rain around initially and then as it gets colder, middle to second half next week, the snow risk increases. Yes, there could be some snow even into the southeastern part of the country. It's possible. Might happen um, around Thursday and into Friday as well with those east to north easterly winds. Wintry showers carry on into the opening days of April. Before then, we go back towards rain. As mild air comes in from the Atlantic, we finish up with cold winds from the north. And again, wintry showers for more northern and northeastern areas. 
Uh, this is the option on the table. Vim E. Sean Sauce Day 4 Day 10 gets us to be 6th of April. 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles, all of them with low pressure to our east, combined with a ridge of high pressure in the Atlantic and going towards Greenland. And that pulls in quite a cold northerly wind. So potentially looking cold and wintry at day 10. In two weeks' time, this is the option that we've got gets us to the 11th of April. 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure. Over country, so quite wet, quite unsettled, um, you know. But we lose the blocking, so temperatures probably start to lift up a bit at that point. Uh, this, uh, this is how CFSV2 is looking. 500 millibar high dollar is breaking down into weekly peers. The first week peer will take us from the 27th of March to the 2nd of April. Uh, the coming week, we'll have high pressure to our west and northwest. Low pressure will be to our east. So, yes, we pull in those cold winds from a north or northeasterly direction. Uh, week 2 is going to be the 3rd to the 9th of April. Again, with high pressure around Greenland and ice and low pressure to our east and out into the Atlantic um, and once more you know that could be quite chilly as well week three is going to be the 10th to the 16th of April more unsettled uh, with low pressure in off it so it could be milder although there is still a hint of blocking within high latitudes at that point so it wouldn't take all that much to uh, be cold there and then uh, week four is going to be the 17th to 23rd of April again trough of low pressure over the UK and ice uh, island combined with high pressure blocking within the normal latitude jet stream is pushed southwards and uh, it could be quite cold and wintry as we get uh, into that week as well it's second half of april so so <laughs> it's going to be hard, hard to get wintry weather widespread but um nevertheless you know uh, it could be a cold april we're setting up here after a couple of really mild months of february and march we could be setting up a significantly cooler or colder april <clears throat> so sorry once again, everybody. Uh, CFSB2, these are 700 millibar height anomalies broken down into monthly periods. So I thought we'd just have a quick look at these um, before we go look at a bit of long range. So April looking potentially quite chilly, low pressure away to our east, high pressure in the Atlantic, and we're bringing in these cold northerly uh, or northeasterly winds in April into May. Um, more anticyclonic, high pressure up towards uh, Scandinavia. That might deliver a much milder May. So after a cooler or colder April, uh, perhaps uh, May goes uh, milder or even warmer. Into June, again, not looking too bad. High pressure up towards Scandinavia. It's a slightly bizarre chart. High pressure up towards Scandinavia. I think there's relatively high-ish pressure there. So maybe a hint of a relatively mild uh, month. Into July, though, um, you know, it's always difficult to work out where the troughs are, so where the white areas are in summer tends to be where the troughs are. So July could be more unsettled with high pressure sort of pulling out to our west and pulling away to our northeast. So July perhaps goes a little bit cooler then and a little bit more unsettled. And uh, then August looks like that. So uh, again, maybe some higher pressure hinted at to be to our, towards our uh, east and northeast, but it's quite a long way in that. And also, it's probably still quite a bit of low pressure in the Atlantic. That might be bringing up like a warm, sunny, so maybe sort of a thundery, wet type August. And finally, September, which is month number six, so it's such a long way out, it's not worth worrying about. But it does have some higher pressure away to the north and west. The white area just here might be a trough of low pressure, so maybe hints of a cooler and more unsettled September. But of course, that is a very, very, very long way out. I just want to uh, remind you what I said at the end of this year's uh, winter 2021-2022 forecast. The forecast wasn't very good, um, it has to be said. It wasn't a particularly good forecast. But um, the journey, you know, the updates, I, I thought they were great. And, and this is what I had to say, you know, at the end of, uh, uh, of this year's winter uh, forecast. I hope you'll enjoy this forecast and this season of winter updates. This has probably been the best season of winter updates, I think, that uh, we've done at Gaz Weather Viz. Um, I've really enjoyed it, and I just hope that over the years people will come back and watch these updates, watch these videos subsequently. You know, almost like moments a lot forever in time. Uh, maybe something that will outlast uh, outlast me, you know, and people will look at these in years to come. And uh, the ideas that we espouse, and hopefully with 
created a legacy that, that will last forever. Maybe we have, maybe we haven't. It's not for me to judge. It's for all of you to judge. But I just thank you all so very much for, for all of the support over the uh, over the past three months and, uh, and the way of embracing these winter updates. Not only this year, but over so many uh, years. And, and I think this is a fantastic way uh, for us to sign off um, with our winter updates. And, yeah, you know, I can't really add uh, a great deal more than, than what I said there. But it is true, you know, that the way you have embraced Gaz Weatherviz, and I appreciate we've been really pushing the boundaries with some of the stuff that we've been doing, like the Long Range updates and like Solar Sunday. You know, have been really, really experimental at times, really pushing uh, the boundaries. And, and you've gone along with, with me on this journey and um, and I just, again, want to say thank you so very much, you know, for, for all of the support that you've given to me over these past uh, 10 years, over this past decade. It's been an incredible ride. It's been an incredible journey. Um, and, uh, and, and it's been amazing. You know, it's been absolutely fantastic. I've loved every minute of it. We've had, I've had a few bad times, but generally... It's been great, and, and it's been great primarily because of all of you and, and, and the way you have supported uh, me. And, and as I say there, the videos should be seen, you know, almost like um, moments frozen in time. So the, the videos will remain, whatever happens with me, you know, whatever happens with me, the videos will stay on YouTube forever. And so, like in the winter updates, if there's, uh, if there, there's ideas, I hope people w will revisit you know, for, for the years and decades to come, and, uh, and, and the historic videos as well, you know, uh, uh, I hope people come back and revisit those, so there's a legacy here that will hopefully outlast me, whatever happens with me, hopefully the legacy, you know, uh, will, will go on, but we're not done yet, you know, I'm not done yet, so I don't want anybody to think that this is like the end, you know, this, this is the end of, of me, somebody said on Twitter, a couple of days ago, but uh, the great thing about being down on your luck is your comeback story, and uh, and Gav will be back, and my comeback, I think, is going to be something, you know, good, I think Gav's comeback will be, uh, will, will, uh, will, will be special, um, so, so watch his space, everybody, watch his space, in the meantime, the plan is, when I get out of hospital, and, um, and, uh, I'm home, and I'm able to start uploading again, Sav will do a few 6 p.m. forecasts for, for, for us, so, um, you'll see Sav doing the weather, Sav's weather vids, um, will, will return, uh, a little bit further on into April, and then when I'm able to, I want to start doing perhaps, like, shorter videos to begin with, and then build up, it will be a while, but I think I'm able to do, like, long 20, 30 minutes, or, you know, down 60 minute videos. I think that's going to take quite a long time uh, before I'm able to get that to, to that sort of length. But, like, short, three, four, five minute videos, I'm hoping to be able to start doing that you know, uh, in a few weeks, but we really have got to wait and see how the, how the mouth, uh, uh, and, uh, of the neck settles down, but the first thing is going to be Sav's weather vids, so, uh, if you enjoy Savvy doing the weather, and who doesn't, then, uh, you'll be able to see, uh, you'll be able to see, uh, Sav doing, uh, the, the, the weather, you know, uh, in, in, in a, in a week, or, or in a couple of weeks, uh, when I'm able to start uploading, um, once again, um, if you want a weather channel to visit while I'm away, uh, or even when I'm back, you know, um, then, uh, I recommend Mark Vogan, uh, the lovely Mark, uh, will be uploading, uh, you know, his videos, so check out markvoganweather.com, and, um, and yeah, you know, uh, check that out, make sure you give him a sub, Mark's a lovely, lovely fella, he's a lovely, lovely man, and so, uh, yes, please check out MarkVoganWeather.com and Mark's YouTube channel. I've got the link to uh, Mark's YouTube channel in the description. So uh, check him out. Give him a sub. Say, you know, tell him Gav sent you. He'll know any because he watches my videos and we do talk quite a lot. So, so um, yeah, give Mark a sub. And, uh, and that's the channel that I uh, recommend, you know. Um, so uh, check out uh, Mark Vogan. If you would uh, all like to do that. If you would like to. Then please can you 
like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to your friends about Gauss Weather Vids uh, as well. As I say, the videos will be stopping for now, but they will be coming back, you know, uh, at some point in the future, and hopefully we won't have to wait too long before I am able to, to get back to it. I want to get back to it as quickly as I possibly can, but I don't know how realistic it is, you know, because I don't know anyone who's been through the operation. I don't know what I'll be like when I wake up from the anaesthetic tomorrow afternoon, um, or evening, so we just got to wait and see how quickly the recovery takes, but hopefully I shall be back on it, you know, I want to get it all back on track as quickly as I possibly can, because I love what I do, I love Gaz Rovers, I love the weather, it's my vocation, it's my passion, you know, um, and I love it, so as soon as I can, uh, it will help with my recovery, you know, to, to, to get onto it as soon as I can, but um, we're just going to have to wait and see how long it takes. Well, that's pretty much it then, uh, everyone. Thank you so much to Savvy for uh, sorting out that little clip that I played uh, a couple of minutes ago. Thanks, Sav, for that. And that's pretty much it, everybody. So um, I'm going to stop the video there. There'll be a video appearing on my uh, original channel, the Gaming Park channel, later on today because it is Operation E. So this evening I'll have an upload uh, there, you know, uh, just telling you how I'm doing uh, as I prepare to go into a uh, hospital tomorrow. But for the weather channel, for the weather videos, that is it for now. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so sorry, buddy. Thank you so much for the support over the past 10 years, over the past decade. And as soon as I possibly can, I'll be back, you know, uh, just like Arnie, I'll be back. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, so as soon as I possibly can, I'll be back uploading uh, once again. I don't know how I'll sound, but I will get back on it. And in the meantime, um, you know, uh, when I'm going to start uploading, uh, then watch out for Savvy doing a few weather videos. Uh, forget. But for this video, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. And I'll see you, you know, I'll see you again. Bye for now.